the 2006 breach of Coloco Dam on Kauai and the massive molasses spill in Honolulu Harbor in 2013. Those are just two examples of events that would have likely wound up in environmental court had it been in place sooner. I think uh, it would have expedited um, the whole situation. And now going forward, unfortunately, when those things happen again, I think we know where to look. We know where to focus our attention, and that'll be a great benefit. The new court was created by the state legislature last year and will handle cases that deal specifically with Hawaii's extensive environmental laws. For example, the lawsuit filed against the city's rail project in 2011 because of an inadequate environmental impact statement would have been placed on the environmental court docket. And EIS typically considers a range of issues from social impacts to the impact on cultural sites. And also, I think uh, Hawaiian rights will be an important part of the environmental court, even though it's not explicit. It is interwoven in a lot of these cases, sometimes criminal, sometimes civil. Chief Justice Mark Rechtenwald has already selected 22 environmental court judges for circuit and district courts statewide. The judges were selected in part because of their environmental expertise. And that's what the legislature has done. It has collected those relevant areas to the environment and created an opportunity for them to be considered by a select group of judges. The William S. Richardson School of Law played a major role in organizing the environmental court and hopes it will boost the school's international profile even more. We expect this is going to help us attract more students and build on what we've already got. Now, when environmental court judges don't have an environmental case, they'll handle, uh, handle other types of cases. Vermont established the first environmental court, but that court deals mostly with land issues. Again, the new Hawaii environmental court begins on Wednesday.